This is my intro music. Welcome to the video. I hope you like it lots, so don't forget to subscribe and click the thumbs up button. Now let's react. Hey, hi, hello there, and welcome to another episode of an anthropologist watches fat acceptance weird crap. Just weird crap. But today, uh, I've been seeing a lot of people talk about this because um, I follow a lot of anti fat acceptance channels. And as as we know, I'm a huge fan of Sam at every size. And so when I saw Sam had covered this, I was like, OK, now we can redo, we can do a reaction to it. I know the cynical dude did a reaction to this as well, um, but I also know that he's kind of not everybody's cup of tea. And the last couple of actually the last couple of videos of his that I've watched have been kind of like, hmm, that's going to that's going to be interesting to see how well that does. So <laughs> to each their own. Have I watched every single video of his? Yes. What does that say about me as a person? Nothing, actually. This is uh, Sam at Every Size. Fat Doctor UK loses license to practice uh, what he doesn't want you to know. This video is four hours old as of today. Right now it is June. Yes, 17th. So probably all of you will be seeing this while I'm on vacation. Did you know I'm going on vacation? I'm going on vacation, you guys. <laughs> But I do want to have a bunch of stuff come out for you guys while I'm on vacation. So this is one of my planned ones. This video is 30 minutes long, so I am going to speed Sam up a little bit. I watch everything sped up. So so before we get too far into this, thank you to everybody who's been supporting the channel. Thank you to my subscribers. Thank you to my members. You guys rock. Thank you to everybody who's going to hit the thumbs up button. And Fat Doctor UK is going to be really interesting to look at because, look, they're delusional, all right? They are just absolutely delusional. And they've been pushing really, really harmful rhetoric for years now because they they tell people that, like, you can't lose weight. Why even bother? Um, they tell people that diabetes doesn't have anything, doesn't have any connection to obesity they they tell you that obesity is completely 100 percent genetics it's there is just a lot that fat doctor uk says out loud and they had their license to practice medicine in the uk um not anymore but it's kind of interesting to me because i mean we do have doctors here that get on public platforms and say shit here in the states that is not correct but i don't I can't think of a, a single doctor that has been publicly stripped of their license um, because of misinformation, you know? Maybe we're just more lax here than the UK is. I mean, the, you, you don't have to go far to convince me of that one, honestly. I don't think it's like a hellscape here in the US because I live here, obviously, but like, I do understand that things are much different in other countries and it's kind of better. That doesn't mean other countries are utopic compared to the United States. Y'all got your issues too. Don't don't worry. <clears throat> no place is perfect. Except for Finland. Finland might be perfect. Might be perfect. If you don't know going into this, I'm a big fan of Sam's. I don't typically have too much critical to say about Sam. And uh, to be honest, Sam and I will probably pause on the exact same points and probably have some of the exact same things to say. If that's not your thing, that's fine. I, I get you. But uh, I do kind of feel like I'm having a conversation with Sam. This is my parasocial relationship with Sam. So I feel like by making these videos, Sam and I are kind of like sitting in the same room with our little coffee cups and we're having a discussion about the state of fat acceptance in the modern day. So <laughs> sure, it could happen. All right, let's get going then. It's interesting timing, isn't it? Seems like someone's a little nervous. How did you know, Sam? How did you know? Hey everyone, welcome back to the Hi. channel. My name is Sam. Yay. I'm glad to have you back here with me again this week. I hope you are ready for some real nonsense. If you Always. When it comes to fat acceptance. Always. If you are new here and this is the first time you are seeing my face, welcome. I make weekly videos dissecting internet nonsense, so if you're into that type of thing or you like today's video, I hope that you'll consider liking and subscribing. It really helps out the channel and make sure you never miss another upload from me. 
I'll have this video linked in the description if you want to follow it and go to Sam's channel. Sam does not need me shouting her out, but if you feel the need to go, please do. That's right. If you hadn't heard it yet, you're hearing it now. The Fat Doctor, previously known as the Fat Doctor UK, no longer has a medical license. Rumors have been swirling, but no one seems to really know, it's not been clarified yet, whether he quit or whether he was fired for spreading medical misinformation. One of the interesting things, because again, I've watched several creators now. Um, one of the things that I'm, it sounds like it's one of those like, you can't fire me, I quit situations because for whatever reason, the Fat Doctor UK decided to share this letter that they received from the board telling them that they were revoking their license. But it said that something like, if you, we just want to let you know that if you voluntarily remove your, or voluntarily give up your license, that you, you won't automatically get it back if you change your mind in the future. So, so that kind of sounded like the, the fat doctor was like, no, I, I, I want you to take my practicing license away. I don't, I don't know why you would do that, but that's kind of what it sounds like. However, the rest of the letter reads as if they were under review anyway. And the, the conclusion of that review was that the fat doctor UK was pushing basically pseudoscience and misinformation and the board wanted them to stop. And so, and so the Fat Doctor UK throws every play in the Fat Acceptance book at them. And my guess is because they were British, they went, have a nice day, and left. So it's, it sounds like one of those situations where they were going to revoke the license anyway. And before they had a chance to revoke the license, Fat Doctor was like, no, I quit. So that's what it sounds like to me. As Sam says, I don't know if we have the whole story, nor will we ever, because the only there's there's two people who know this story, and that's the Fat Doctor UK and the board, the UK board, um, and they probably don't share stuff like this publicly because it's probably bad form for professionals. So everything we know is coming out of the Fat Doctor UK, and of course, it's all heavily edited and heavily biased. Would it surprise you to learn that he wasn't even being investigated for medical misinformation? If so, then I suggest you stick around because your girl had time this week. So we are going to dig into this thing. We're going to dive headfirst into the nonsense and see if we can sort our way through the details to find out what really happened. Let's just get right. Also, just going off of Sam's little thumbnail, Kiana Doctory gets involved in this somewhere. And I'm also very excited about that. Right on into it. If you don't know who the Fat Doctor UK is, go ahead and just click out of this video. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Come back. But do prepare yourselves to lose a little bit of your sanity throughout this video. I am so sorry in advance. For a little background, the Fat Doctor is Dr. Asher Larmy, a trans doctor who started his time on the internet with a blog titled Weight Loss the Hard Way. He dreamed of being a famous weight loss doctor. But as his blog and his weight loss stalled, the Fat Doctor began to discover the vast and exciting world that is the fat acceptance and fat liberation community online. Then, someone from the fat community reached out to him to let him know that he didn't need to diet, that intuitive eating was possible, and that was it. A little light bulb clicked on, and the Fat Doctor's content was changed forever. Look, all right. I, I get struggling on your diet. I do. You're a doctor. I just, you're a doctor. I just expect different things from doctors when it comes to things like physical health. I don't know exactly what kind of medicine that Dr. UK practices. Maybe we'll get into it. I've never known. I've always just assumed it was like general medicine. Um, I could be wrong. So I get like your diet stalling and getting frustrated about weight loss and, you know, just being like over it. I get that part. I do. It's hard. You know, I get, but you're a doctor. Like once fat acceptance started approaching you with their harebrained and crackpot ideas, you, you've been taught correctly. So at that point you purposefully chose to ignore everything you've been taught in order to, to make it feel better that you couldn't lose weight instead of 
reevaluating the tactics that you were using and maybe trying something different. You're a doctor. I just, it blows my mind. And then on top of it, on top of being like, F it, I don't care anymore. You decided to create a couple different social media accounts, plus like your own counseling to counsel other people into not losing weight. I just, I've always been so baffled by the Fat Doctor UK because they're a, le well, they were a legit doctor. They've gone through the system. They've been educated. They have the degree. And then woke up one day and was like, well, I can't lose weight, so fuck everything. Okay, well, alrighty then. And from that point forward, he would no longer be using his social media to provide people with health updates, but rather he would start making content like this. Fat doesn't put pressure on your heart. This is what I'm talking about. Fat doesn't put pressure on your heart. There are literal autopsies that show the amount of visceral fat around your heart is bad for it. Like, you're a doctor. At some point you had to do this, like there had to be an intro class in like visceral fat, right? I don't know, maybe I expect too much. But yeah, this, this is the kind of thing the Fat Doctor UK would routinely say. And look how smug they look. Like, and this is the danger of it too. Like they look smug, they, well, they stumbled over it, which tells me that they know they were lying, but you can correct that. It's just this kind of shit. But because Fat Doctor can actually go, look, I have credentials. People are like, look, 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 this doctor is saying that visceral fat isn't bad for you. And it's like, yeah, this doctor, this one doctor out of how many thousands, maybe millions, I don't know how many doctors there are in the world, is saying this thing that no one else agrees with. What does that tell you? Apparently it tells you that there's a conspiracy to wipe out fat people from the planet by making them lose weight. And that somehow is erasure. Oh my God. This is true and important. It can also be true that excess fat surrounding organs can be detrimental to health. The two are not mutually exclusive. I don't know what the other part of that was. This is just a response on TikTok. Not enough with the fat around the organs. That is not a real thing. It is made up. So it's made up that there's fat around the organs. Wow. And when people began to question him and call out his social media antics, he dared people to report him to the GMC, going so far as to publish his own GMC number in his social media bios. Well, if you're going to challenge people, people are going to accept it. I don't know about all of you out there, but issuing a dare to the internet just doesn't seem like a good idea. Like, I would never. <laughs> but Asher clearly really thought that he was doing no wrong and no harm could come to him. Do people really believe that the internet is safe? Like, is this really a thing? Is there really an entire generation, multiple generations now, that believe that they are safe on the internet? Is there? Because I got some really bad news for everybody. But, as was expected, people took him up on that and started reporting him. And then, much to his surprise, the GMC <laughs> started looking at those complaints. I mean, look, I'm not for this kind of a thing. I'm really not. Do not dox people. Don't, don't get me wrong. Dr. UK dox themselves. Don't do this. Don't go to people's jobs. Don't go to people's homes. Don't go to people's friends, their family. I don't care what outrage you believe you have. You don't do this. It's weird. It's creepy. It's uncalled for. However, when this, this board of directors or whoever the hell they are, when they started getting probably thousands, if not millions of emails, phone calls, and whatever else they got saying, hey this guy's on the internet saying all this crazy stuff maybe you want to look into that it's hard to ignore just a quick note here because i did have to look this up the gmc stands for general medical council 
and they are an independent regulator of doctors in the UK. Their work was established by the Medical Act of 1983, and they cover five areas of regulation. That's interesting. So they've only been around since 83. I, I don't do medicine. I'm not a doctor here. So, well, anywhere, honestly. But my thing is, is do we have something like this in the U.S.? Uh, do you have something like this in Canada? Those seem to be my, my two big, well, in Australia. <laughs> Are you an English-speaking country? <laughs> that, that's pretty much where my views come from. The medical register, standards for doctors, education and training, revalidation for licenses, and addressing concerns. By now, I'm sure you have all seen this Instagram post where the fat doctor told a GMC investigator to F himself and that he was going to resign. It's safe to say that this- Okay, so I, I'm right. All right. So, so they started getting investigated. Fat Doctor UK started getting investigated and then basically said, screw you, I'm going to take my ball and go home. All right, then. This whole thing has really provided the fat doctor an opportunity to present himself as a victim, but also a martyr to a larger cause. Um, but I think for us to fully understand how we have arrived where we are, we first need to take a few steps back and look at where this whole thing started. Reports, as the GMC has listed them on their official website, <clears throat> started in April 2022 when two medical professionals reached out. One was a senior research fellow and lecturer in nutrition and dietetics, and the other was a senior weight management dietitian. Their overall complaint focused on Dr. Larmy's disrespectful behavior on social media. Then, in May 2022... Oh no, oh no, no, no. There was more. There was so much more. On 19th April 22, the GMC received a complaint from AB, a senior research fellow and lecturer in nutrition dietetics, and DJ, a senior weight management dietitian, about Dr. Larmy's, quote, disrespectful behavior on social media, henceforth AB's complaint. AB provided a copy of a comment posted by Dr. Laramie on the social media platform X, formerly known as Twitter, and which will refer to as such in this. Okay, we're just okay. X is Twitter, whatever. The comment said, "Quote." Now this is this is the the fat doctor UK's words. If you're a cis white man, that is, I dislike your species as a general rule, and you gotta work real damn hard to get into my good books. I don't give a shit about your good books. Um, I don't, I don't need to be in the good book of somebody who's willingly and knowingly pushing pseudoscience and pseudomedicine on the internet and just flat out denying actual science i don't i don't cotton with science deniers though i know this is also not directed at me i am not a cis white man nor apparently the same species as cis white men i did not realize we were different species so <laughs> why do people do that I like different species first off if we were there would be no human race secondly <laughs> focused on Dr. Laramie's disrespectful behavior on social media. Then in May, Dr. Laramie has mounted an online campaign with specific publicly declared intent to destroy my work and practice on Twitter and Instagram, inciting their followers to, quote, bring me down. Dr. Laramie has committed liable by declaring me publicly online a white privileged supremacist, a racist, quote, thin, comfortable with stigma, and therefore an enemy of fat people and harmful to all fat people and thus they will do all in their power to prevent me from working with the public in both eating disorder and obesity therapy or training as i understand the uk it's a lot easier to take somebody to task over this kind of crap um so why would you do it like dr laramie aka the fat doctor uk must really feel like they're bulletproof and i got news for them because here you see that they are well according to i'm assuming this is ab according to ab's uh complaint here dr laramie is actively attacking them like actively sending followers after them actively trying to destroy their online pers their online presence and actively prevent them from working these, these are things if this person can prove that 
in any court of law, even here in the U.S., that's bad. <laughs> that's bad for Dr. Laramie. Can they prove it? They did take it to the board and that this, this doctor's board of people. So I don't know. And obviously something came of it. So in 2022, another medical professional reached out to the GMC to allege that the fat doctor was targeting her and her business. Okay. So this was a third person. So we've already got two people. Now we've got a third person. This is, this is not doc. This isn't AB. This is a totally different person. Stating that they needed to be taken down because they were harmful to fat people. She further alleged that Dr. Larmy was harassing not only her business publicly, but also harassing individuals privately, listing a vulnerable blogger who reached out to her, alleging that the fat doctor had threatened to share their private messages. People who have stepped in to support us have also been blocked or abused. I have attached a long communication from Name Redacted, a vulnerable blogger who received threats personally from Dr. Laramie that they would be aware that oh that they would be aware might be harmful who said vlog or a blogger dr laramie knew that this man had a history of abuse and was vulnerable such and such contacted me by email in a state i assessed as not great uh he has written a report for the gmc his statement is attached wow wow on the advice of my solicitor, aka lawyer, I have been on Twitter or Inst I have not been on Twitter or Instagram. I continue to receive alerts from worried members of the public that Dr. Laramie is still involved in calling me dangerous, etc., and to be destroyed, and is inciting their followers to take up their cause. This got bad. I didn't know any of this. This is awful. This is. This is illegal. <laughs> this is illegal. Well, it's illegal here. Uh, is this illegal in the UK? Are you allowed to do this in the UK? Y'all gotta let me know. This is insane. The Fat Doctor UK knowingly targeted a man and harassed him to the point of self-ending. Wow. All right. The internet is forever, and so those messages have been archived, which makes it possible for us to see evidence of what this person is saying. First, we can see that the fat doctor said, I will actively discourage all fat people from reaching out to any ED service that encourages weight loss because they are harmful. There is no compromise to be made here. Um, so, all right, we've got, I'm assuming this is Dr. Laramie. It's clear you're feeling personally attacked here. I'm sorry that it feels that way, but I know blank. She is not an abuser. If she's hurt you, then I would encourage you to sit down with her and talk it through. I am happy to mediate. Uh, this other person says, you say that, but I, f but I disagree. This is the person that they're, that fat Dr. UK was talking to. I am not talking it through. I had to face my own abuser for six years. I will not face another one to gaslight me. To which Fat Doctor UK responds, as for reaching out to ED services, I will actively discourage all fat people from reaching out to any ED service that encourages weight loss because they are harmful. There is no compromise to be made here. Bernie and Donnie are dangerous manipulators of the truth and will and I will do anything in my power. I can't read the last line. Bernie and Deanne are dangerous manipulators of the truth, and I will do everything in my power to prevent them from hurting fat people. Which is interesting because I'm sure they feel the same way. I feel like they probably feel like they're saving fat people from Dr. Larmy. Anyway, let's continue with these messages because it only gets wilder from here. If you are the one harassing other people to the point of self-ending, then you are the problem. I, I don't know who needs to hear that, but... We can also see that this blogger asks the fat doctor not to gaslight them and not to carry on fighting with this other doctor, as it's discouraging people from seeking medical treatment. The fa uh, fat doctor UK says, sorry to hear that, and the person, same person, I'm assuming, no, don't talk to her because I don't want to create something. You talk about abu abuse complex and Davro, etc., is doing that to us as well. Just because we are thin, it doesn't mean we aren't vulnerable and oppressed too. That's all I'm going to say, but please don't take it. Please don't take this any further. 
and now people aren't reaching out to eating disorder services because of all of this. It's so, I think this says it's harmful or it's hurting. Not to carry on fighting with this other doctor, as it's discouraging people from seeking medical treatment. It's the harming. The doctor's final response to this blogger is this. I have heard, but your needs do not override the needs of the fat community. I will not be sharing any details of this conversation unless I see you are pretending to be a fat liberationist and interacting with members of the community. I will do my best to address my concerns with them privately, but since you no longer wish to engage with me and are clearly only interested in performative allyship, then I am left with no choice. Airing this publicly will be my absolute last resort. That very much depends on how you choose to conduct yourself moving forward. In performative allyship and are apparently too rooted in white supremacy to move beyond that, then I am left with no choice. I am a little disappointed in you. I never really trust thin white folks who claim to care about me and the fat community. Your, ha your actions are hardly surprising. Um, okay. Now, I feel like I have to admit here that I had an inkling that Fat Doctor was like not a great person based on their social media presence. No. Shocking. But man, did this cement that for me. I had no idea that the Fat Doctor was going this far with people, especially in private DMs. It is absolutely bonkers to me. And I also had no idea that he felt that it was necessary for him to deem himself the ultimate gatekeeper, the final boss of the fat acceptance and fat liberation movements online. So many of these fat acceptance personas online feel that way. They, they all feel like they are the guardians of the gate and that all must go through them in order to reach the utopia that is the fat acceptance community. Y'all are welcome to stand there all you want. Um, coming out of a field that likes to use gatekeeping as a way to keep people out of the academic field, um, it doesn't work out real well in the long run. And considering your movement is falling apart because it's not well put together to begin with and based on a false premise in the first place, I wouldn't gatekeep if I were you. <laughs> I wouldn't gatekeep too hard. <laughs> I had no idea, but I think the thing that blew me away the most regarding this situation was when he said this in his podcast. I'm not going to speak too much about this particular individual. I will say three things about him. Number one, this individual was is a cisgender white heterosexual, uh, no, that's not true, cisgender white male, um, who a thin cisgender white male, who has a lot more privilege than I do, right? And a lot of, a lot of supportive people around him, a lot of supportive people on social media who came after me. Um, and poor, poor fat Dr. UK. You got on the internet and said something stupid and a bunch of people came after you for it? And um, that's the first thing you need to know about him. The second thing you need to know about him is I did not make threats. I was getting very upset by the way he was speaking to me. And I did say, stop it, otherwise I'm going to publish these messages. But I never did. He, on the other hand, did. No, you didn't. You said, I'm going to hold these over your head unless I see that you are continuing to talk in the fat acceptance community. And then I will publish them. That, that's, that's a threat. It. He published every single one of our personal messages. Because you said you would do it first. Look at that face. Look at that face. Ooh. They really think they've got that guy on something. Sir. Sir. You threatened this first. The guy decided to take action before you and publish everything before you. So everyone can see right now where you just said that you were the one being threatened. That, that you really weren't. You were the one making the threats. That's what happens. That's what happens when you give people ultimatums. They'll either scurry away, but most of the time, most of the time, it, it, it turns out to bite you in the ass. I'll just tell you that now. So I threatened him, but he actually not only threatened me, but went ahead and did the very thing that he's accusing me of threatening him of. He's essentially asked. Y you threatened him. It's there in bl blue and white, I think it was. Black and white on your end. Asking, why do my threats even matter when this person released those DMs on their own? Right. And... I just, it's so icky and it makes me feel so uncomfortable. And you guys, you guys, my victim defended themselves. <laughs> Loser. <laughs> like, this, like, <laughs> my victim accused me of threatening them and then defended themselves on the internet. <laughs> Who's going to believe them? <laughs> really? Actually, I think the best part of all of this is how ironic it is that it's buried within a podcast talking about taking your power back. Yeah, that's the other thing. These people always do this. The fat acceptance community takes their power back by turning around and 
bullying everyone else. If you don't agree with them, they're going to bully you. If you do agree with them, but you don't agree with them in the right way, they're going to bully you. If you don't fit, if you're not fat or if you're not fat enough, they're going to bully you. Um, shit, they go after you if you're too old. They go after you if you're too young. They will do anything to bully people into agreeing with them, including just throwing any word they can find in the dictionary at you if it's considered offensive. They don't care they just want to hurt other people this is a beautiful example of hurt people hurt people because i i believe every one of these people probably had a rough time growing up and getting adjusted or something terrible has happened that has just made their lives hell i can believe that but their way of dealing with it isn't finding help their way of dealing with it is turning around and attacking everyone else that <laughs> the fat doctor can't see that this is that person taking the power away from the fat doctor because he's essentially made threats saying you better behave or I'm going to release these to the internet. And this other person was like, well, I don't have anything to hide, but you sure do. So I'm going to go ahead and release them because then that undoes the power of that threat. Exactly. And yet the fat doctor UK is like, but I'm the victim here. I'm the victim somehow i'm the one that's being victimized here because they're they're showing you the the shitty thing that i said to them in dms like that that makes me the victim no no like i don't how does the fat doctor not see this like that person is taking the power away from the threats that you made to try to keep them quiet and the fat doctor doesn't see it because it's not part of the fat doctor's persona the fat doctor has an idea of themselves as we all do and clearly does not see themselves as the bully in this situation. They see themselves as the victim, the perpetual constant victim. And anyone who moves against them in any way is the aggressor there. I would like to see how the whole conversation got started. Like, what the hell are they even talking about to begin with? Because there's a third person involved, whoever that might be. Anyway, despite all of that, the first GMC registrar to review the case decided at this point that they were going to close without further review. Anyway, despite all of that, the first GMC registrar to review the case decided at this point that they were going to close without further review. To summarize the document, the concerns raised were not enough to require them to restrict or remove the doctor's registration at this time. Dear so-and-so, thank you for taking the time to contact the General Medical Council with your concerns. An assistant register GMC decision maker has reviewed your complaint and they have now decided what action the GMC will be taking. The concerns you have raised would not require us to restrict or remove the doctor's registration at this time. However, we will be sharing your concerns directly with the doctor's responsible officer so that it can be used as part of their annual appraisal. So they're not going to do anything about the fat doctor publicly attacking them but they are going to put a strong strongly worded note in the fat doctor's uh, personnel file okay cool i guess if you get enough of those something has to happen right they did note that they would share this with dr larmy's responsible officer for his annual appraisal now with all of that in mind i want to call attention to something that i found really interesting here and that is that we can see this initial closing response was issued on june 29th 2022 and within this document you can see that they noted they were going to share the complaint concerns with the responsibility officer but also a very specific tweet in which the fat doctor said something reminiscent of I don't give a shit about my medical license and will sell it on eBay. I am currently minded to refer to the matters specific to the bullying harassment allegations as well as the, com the comment which we perceived as inappropriate regarding their license to practice the Dr. Laramie's RO to further review. This process would allow the further concerns to be addressed during Mr. Or, sorry, Dr. Laramie's annual appraisal. I highlight that the GMC issue guidance to all registrants regarding our expectations for conduct via social media, as well as interactions with colleagues. The issues will also remain on record for further review, should this be required. I wonder, um, I wonder, and I'm asking because I don't know, does, you know, this, this person sends this in 
and says, hey, this is happening. Here's some evidence of it. And the GMC looks at it. Does the GMC notify Dr. Laramie that they're being investigated or that there has been a complaint filed against them? Or does this just sit in Dr. Laramie's folder like a little surprise party at the end of the year for the annual appraisal? I don't know. I'm, and I'm not entirely sure which one of those actions would be better, honestly, because I feel like if people don't believe that they can come forward anonymously, I guess, looking to, you know, air complaints, they then they won't, and then serious stuff won't come out. Um, but at the same time, especially with Fat Doctor UK's reputation here, it, it's very possible that if they knew they were being investigated, that they would turn around and try attacking this person even harder. So honestly, I don't know which situation would be better because I also feel like, well, I know if I got some kind of annual review at the end of the year and I got surprised with a bunch of complaints about my behavior, I, I know that would kind of tick me off, but I also don't like actively try to destroy people and send my followers out to take them out please don't do that ever as a matter of fact i tell you guys not to do that don't do that it's bad stop it you said something reminiscent of i don't give this person now designating themselves as male on twitter slash instagram has posted i don't give a shit spelt correctly for my medical license and will put it up for sale on ebay i am sorry that I'm sorry that this is anecdotal and that I have no screenshot because I am blocked, but is blah, blah, blah. I give a shit about my medical license and will sell it on eBay. Around this same time, Dr. Larmy was posting that he no longer wanted to serve as a general practitioner, both on Twitter. Uh, Fat Doctor UK, in case you haven't heard, I'm not a GP anymore. Not from June 29th anyway. I would rather eat dog poop at this stage. I cannot be complicit in the mass oppression and medical abuse of fat people that is not only condoned but encouraged by organizations such as the GMC and RCGP. Responding to someone named Libby. Nothing to fear in healthy, reasonable debate. Personal attacks only come from one side of this argument that shouldn't even have two sides. Mess of misinformation, misinterpretation, bias, and vitriol from some. Bernie was personally attacked, and then I was by a GP over and out. So, so someone on Twitter that you've been having an argument with puts, a, puts you on blast about how you're being, you're sharing misinformation, misinterpretation, bias, and vitriol personally attacking the person writing the tweet plus another person and they're like and they're a gp and the part you take offense to is the gp part does that mean then bad doctor uk that you were doing all of these other things it, it's like it's like when princess leia tells han solo you're a scruffy looking herf nerder and he goes who's scruffy looking right so <laughs> so, do you are a nerf herder? Why is that a bad thing? <laughs> anyway, I just want to point out the part the part that Fat Doctor takes umbrage of is being called a general practitioner. <laughs> I'm not a general practitioner. Um, so so you are an online bully then? Okay, cool. Some time, Doctor Larmy was posting that he no longer wanted to serve as a general <laughs> practitioner, both on Twitter and again on Instagram. The Fat Doctor UK, so I've got some exciting news to share. I've resigned from my job and I'm relocating to Scotland. I hear it's nice there. I've decided that I want to pursue my work as Fat Doctor full time and am unable to do that whilst working as a GP. Being a doctor is different in the UK, isn't it? I'm not saying I'm never going to practice again, but right now I feel like I can do the most good by advocating for fat people within the healthcare system. I've got lots of plans going forward, which include seeing clients privately who want safe space to help recover from the trauma and abuse they have suffered at the hands of medical professionals as a result of weight stigma. <sighs> Guys, there's punctuation for reasons. Let me know in the comments what you think. This is actually fairly rational. I, I don't have any issue with anything that was said in the Instagram post. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with feeling like you're not doing 
you're not doing your your calling in the job that you're currently in and you know quitting and going to do something else because that's where you feel you're called you know that's fine um got nothing wrong with that and this is worded in a perfectly rational non weird way go for it all i all i know is that like here in the u.s if you're a gp and you're not working for a hospital and you close your your office down like it's your office it's kind of like they're all kind of like self-employed here basically i don't think that's how that works in the u.s um i do think all doctors have to be somehow connected to a hospital they have to have like admitting privileges with hospitals and there's like things they have to do to, in order to have that so anyway it doesn't matter but they're not like beholden to the government i guess i don't know i'm very fascinated with how how the uk gets their healthcare system to function i mean haha the joke is it doesn't function but like obviously there's some kind of flow chart flow pattern that's supposed to occur that's supposed to make it work you know because i kind of sort of know how the healthcare system here in the u.s works it's functional this time sharing more detail that he'd quit his job to relocate to scotland where he would not be pursuing a job as a gp so that he could focus full-time on being the fat doctor online it's interesting timing isn't it seems like someone's a little nervous it gets even more interesting when you realize just later that same month the gmc also decided that the first closure was materially flawed as a result of this email, the GMC informed me that they have opened an investigation into whether the original ruling on the 22nd of June was materially flawed. Five months later, on the 22nd of November, they made the following ruling, uh, some stuff. And that they were considering whether they should open an investigation into his fitness to practice. Within their longer report, we can see that they have reviewed the information again, and this time they did find that the posts made by Dr. Larmy, which Blank has provided us with, tend to support an allegation that Dr. Larmy has bullied, harassed, and made gratuitous, unsubstantiated, or unsustainable comments about other professionals online in breach of paragraph 15 of the guidance. Also, please... Oh no, there was a ton more there. Hang on. <laughs> we read this stuff. That's what we do here. If one job on this ship... Let's see, the post by Dr. Laramie, which Blank has provided us with tend to support an allegation that Dr. Laramie has bullied, harassed, and made gratuitous, unsubstantiated, or unsustainable comments about other professionals online, including calling them harmful to fat people, a danger to people with EDs, and white supremacists, in breach of paragraph 15 of the guidance of you. Okay, that's all right. That must be a thing. Dr. Laramie's, quote, thin white woman comment is also racist. Such alleged conduct and Dr. Laramie's alleged harassment and abuse of a vulnerable member of the public af included including threatening to publish the private messages between them on twitter has the potential to bring the medical profession into disrepute and undermine the public's confidence in the profession i mean it's not going to help the situation but i think you got other problems but you know plug the holes where you can <laughs> This is not the this is not only in relation to how a doctor would be expected to behave towards other professionals and members of the public, but also concerned about the potential for such behavior to affect Dr. Laramie's interaction with patients whose opinions on weight loss might differ from theirs, or who are vulnerable and whose confidentiality must be respected, or about whom Dr. Laramie may have discriminatory views. Yep. Dr. Laramie's thin white woman comment is also racist. <sighs> Bigoted, maybe? Racist in the colloquial term? I, I mean, even in the UK, that kind of a situation, I'm not entirely sure, falls in that category. But you know what? The definition of racist has definitely changed over the last 10, 10, 10 to 20 years or so. Online, in breach of paragraph 15 of the guidance. Also, please ignore the yellow highlighting that's on these documents. These were published by the fat doctor, and I honestly believe that he highlighted certain sections to try to keep his audience's attention away from what this document is actually saying by pinpointing things that aren't really meaningful, but allow him to try to paint himself as this victim. I kind of disagree there. I mean, other than the like questioning of the term, the use of the term, um, 
I think having those things highlighted were maybe not doing the Doctor UK. I, did, I mean, I, I would not have guessed that is something that the Fat Doctor UK would have chose to highlight because it's not exactly defending them in any way. Um, if anything, it's kind of highlighting the worst of it, you know? I mean, yeah, there was a lot more in that paragraph because I went back and reread it because I saw that there was a lot more going on. I think, I don't know, I didn't know the highlighting was from the Doctor. I shouldn't call them that. They're not worthy of being called that. I didn't know the highlighting was from the Fat Doctor, but I don't think it's really helping the Fat Doctor's cases case, but I am also not sympathetic to the Fat Doctor. So I'm not reading those in a, a sympathetic, with a sympathetic bias. So maybe if I was, I don't know, man. I see Sam's argument, though, before everybody gets all upset. I see Sam's argument, though. That'd be one of those things where I'm like, let us get our coffee and have a discussion. It's also probably not that important to the overall argument. So just ignore those while I continue to show you this report. The other important... I'm assuming there's going to be more. <laughs> ...piece noted in this first section reads, The previous triage decision maker would have been aware that in May 2021, we shared complaints with Dr. Larmy's responsibility officer. Concerns raised by both professionals and other members of the public about Dr. Larmy's social media conduct. These concerns included similar concerns to those raised in May 2022 and April 2022, suggesting a pattern of behavior by Dr. Larmy which had not been modified by the responsibility officer's notification. This means that the original decision was materially flawed. Okay, so they did notify Fat Doctor that their behavior was incongruent with the guidance sorry i'm just using big words now um so they were informed i guess that would then inform them that they are being investigated so they did know they were being investigated they did know that their conduct was unseemly um but it, the the gmc did not go as far as to like officially do something whatever they would do and so later someone else has petitioned to have this reopened what was it five months later i think it was to have this reopened it was reopened under the grounds that it is materially flawed and so now the investigation is on again and just a fun side note here that i actually found kind of funny when i was listening to all of this Kiana Doherty's YouTube video featuring the Fat Doctor UK, we've all seen it, it was amazing, was actually submitted by one of the complainants as evidence and was actually considered as a part of this whole thing. Dude! First off, first off, good job. Second off, it has got to be somewhat of a, of a little bit of an ego boost to know that a a film or film a video that you made is considered high enough quality and good enough research that it is being submitted as evidence in an investigation and uh, unless you know it's being in, it's submitted as an evidence against you i suppose but not in this situation so i don't know i feel like for kiana like not only is this really awesome in general but also like what that just right there tells you why you should be watching Kiana Dockery if you're not Dockery if you're not because her stuff is mwah. so there you go props get it girl so they've issued this statement and for the purpose of putting this thing into context and, and making it easily digestible think of this as like a verbal warning right you've done something wrong okay. at your job and your job has issued you a verbal warning okay because I was having a hard time figuring out what exactly this was other than a bunch of people going, she called me bad names, kind of a thing. I was trying to, I was trying to figure out what all this was other than like, they were making fun of me, kind of a thing. I, so. Because essentially what they're saying is the, the supervisor, the responsibility officer who helps with the renewal every year of his registration should be bringing these complaints to his attention and basically saying, knock it off. Like, don't do this if you want to continue to re-up your license without issue. Stop it. Stop. Stop it. <laughs> so that's basically what's going on right now. No. No. 
No. <laughs> Imagine being in the room. What are we doing? Training cats? Now, obviously, there's no way for us to know if the responsibility officer had that conversation and told the fat doctor to tone it down a bit. But what we do know is that the fat doctor absolutely did not tone it down a bit. You're at an 11. I kind of need you to come down here to like a five. Maybe four? Can we get to four? And just kept on going with his same old social media antics. And that this behavior is what actually led him to being investigated by the GMC. In my opinion, he just can't help himself when it comes to social media. Even talking about and reviewing this case for his podcast, he keeps saying multiple times that he's allowed to say whatever he wants. I mean, you are. And, and no, nothing is physically stopping you from saying whatever you want to say. There might be some severe repercussions for the stuff that might come out of your mouth, but I mean, in the long run, nothing's stopping you. You just happen to have certain laws against screaming fire in a crowded theater, you know? Oh yeah, you might not like the white man. You might say, you could argue, why did you put white in there? Why did you need to put fine? You can argue that, but I don't owe you any explanations. I can say whatever I want. It's not me trying to be nasty. And it's not you trying to be nasty. It's totally you trying to be nasty. Like, for some reason, you think you've got a gotcha comment there. Like, you brought it up because you thought it was relevant. It it's why you walked back the heterosexual, because apparently the guy's not actually heterosexual, or you don't know that he's heterosexual, so... Instead of having that in there, you walked it back. We, like, we watched you do it in real time. It's totally you trying to be nasty. <laughs> While that's true, it's also true that freedom of speech does not mean freedom from consequences. Thank I you. also find it really interesting that within these documents, the GMC is basically saying that um, the fat doctor hasn't really slowed down on his antics, hasn't reflected or said he was remorseful or that the things he said were offensive or inappropriate or he could have worded them differently. And when Asher reads this, not only does he double down, but he also contradicts himself. They cannot expect me to bow before them and apologize and, and say I was wrong and I, I realize the impact that my comments have made. Like, yeah, with hindsight, should I have made those comments? No. Uh, I still think them. I still feel them. Should I have said them publicly? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. At the time, I did it and I'm not apologizing for it. And this is... I mean, at least you know what you said was wrong. This is the only time he admits that maybe he shouldn't have said what he said. Could I have worded my, my messages better? so that they weren't so um, offensive and so provocative. Sure, but that's the nature of Twitter. But most- No, fam, you don't get to do that, no. Uh, Twitter's already a burning cesspool of nasty vitriol, so I'm just gonna add fuel to the fire. Okay, wait, no, stop. You guys, the internet doesn't have to be a shitty place. It, it doesn't have to be a shitty place, okay? We make it that way, but it doesn't have to be like that. Most interestingly, out of all of the things that I watched to prepare for this conversation, he did kind of admit that he has a problem with social media. As I said in my last, um, my, my last episode, I'm breaking up with social media. And one of the reasons is because I don't like myself when I'm on social media. I say shit that perhaps with hindsight, I wish I hadn't said, but who doesn't? A lot of people, because they understand that the internet is forever. Like, okay, like up until recently, Twitter was forever too, but like now we're losing for, for, for storage reasons. And also, do I really need the first tweet I ever posted? It was literally hello world. Um, but the point is, is lots of people understand that saying shit online is saying shit online is worse than going out into the middle of a city standing in the middle of the road and screaming whatever it was that you just typed on Twitter, okay? It, you are safer doing that in a crowded city. You could go to the most crowded intersection in New York, take a bullhorn with you and shout whatever it was you thought you were gonna type into Twitter. And you're still probably going to have less of a reaction than whatever the fuck it was you just typed into Twitter, all right? This is gonna be way worse for you in the long run. Yeah, somebody's probably gonna come over and beat you down over this one, you might have a higher chance of getting shot in the moment. Just, you know, throwing out worst case scenarios here. Twitter will ruin your life. You're just dead over here. You still gotta live through this shit. Everybody does that. You know, who, who, who's perfect? It's not me. So as he's venting, he's continuing to tell us about this case. 
And the fitness to practice case was officially opened in October 2023. And then in December 2023, the GMC wrote to the fat doctor once again to provide him the information and the allegations to be considered and to offer him an opportunity to comment before the case was referred to examiner. Can't you guys write your, your dates like normal people? On 3 October 2023, the GMC wrote to Dr. Laramie to inform him that an investigation of his fitness to practice has been opened following the complaints from AB and DG. On 21 December 2023, once the investigation was complete, GMC wrote to Dr. Laramie under Rule 7 of the rules. I love how everything's just like the something. Their letter provided Dr. Laramie with the information and the allegations that would be considered and offered him an opportunity to comment before the case was referred to the GMC case examiners. Okay, so. Dr. Laramie, fat doctor, is being notified as this investigation is going on. So they are aware that something is going on. Do they know who A, B, and D, G are? Like, I would really hope that maybe they don't. I don't know. Especially given, given the fat doctor's behavior online, especially. I feel like telling them who their accusers are would not go well for their accusers. But, you know, we here in the U.S., we have, uh, in, the, in a court of law, you're, you are... You, as the accused, are allowed to see your accusers. You get to know who's accusing you of what. I don't know. I don't know. It does not appear from either documentation that was posted by the GMC nor the fat doctor that he made a comment. So the case was forwarded on, and ultimately the GMC decided that the fat doctor should be given a warning on their record for making comments that were inappropriate and or offensive. However, in view of the evidence before today, the committee has determined that it is appropriate and proportionate to issue Dr. Laramie the following warning. That's a first sentence. In 2022, Dr. Laramie posted tweets online which refer to gender, color, and sexual orientation in a manner that was inappropriate and or offensive and or disparaging and demonstrative of aptitude, sorry, attitudes that were contrary to those required by doctors of good medical practice. This conduct does not meet with the standards required of a doctor. It risks bringing the profession into dispute, dis, disrepute, and must not be repeated. Okay, basically, they're just telling them to shut up and I'm not going to read the rest of that because clearly I'm having problems reading today. Their decision also stemmed from two things. The fact that they were concerned the fat doctor was going to be a repeat offender when it comes to these things on social media. Gilson, Gilson, Gilson submitted that in the absence of any acceptance from Dr. Laramie that their own comments were inappropriate, the committee may wish to consider that weight it could apportion to Dr. Laramie's mitigating evidence regarding the unfavorable online activity directed at Dr. Laramie. I barely know what the hell that just said. Uh, okay. Yeah. And that the fat doctor actually told them that he's made hundreds of comments similar to those in question. Dr. Laramie also questioned why two tweets specifically referenced had been deemed to be offensive or inappropriate, given that they were two examples of the hundreds I have written about white supremacy, privilege, colonialism, and oppression. Um, it's called sampling the evidence. And what you should be more concerned about is that only two tweets were needed to show how crappy your conduct online was out of the hundreds that you have allegedly written in the same vein. Only two of them were necessary for everyone to go, yeah, maybe not. Okay, like, <laughs> you read... They read two of them and then went, by the way, there's hundreds more of these. And they went, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, we should do something about that. <laughs> what defense was this? Why are those two offensive when all the other ones aren't? I I'm not saying they're not. I'm saying these are evidence of bad behavior and that the hundreds of others are just further evidence of the same bad behavior. <laughs> all right. There is an argument based on two tweets out of the... This is going to be precious. I just, I can't wait. Go! How many? I honestly cannot believe that he not only put this in writing, but also said it out loud. Like, why would you give them more fodder? Ah, <laughs> uh, sometimes the fat doctor is just clueless, isn't he? So... This is the thing about the fat doctor that has blown my mind every time I've seen them talk out loud. I don't know how to put this politely. I'm impressed they made it through med school. Let me put it that way. We've finally made it to the pinnacle moment. 
the moment where the fat doctor flexed on us all by tanking his own career and posting about it on social media. If you haven't seen it yet, he posted a screen capture on Instagram that shares the top of an email from an investigation committee officer with a response from him that reads, go F yourselves, I resign my registration. To which they responded that if the fat doctor opted for voluntary erasure, that when they decided to re-register, at that point they would have to complete the same fitness to practice and prove that they met the standards for re-licensure. And honestly... Everything, um... Sam just showed there, I'm not going to go back and reread it, only because, like, literally every video about this has gone over this stuff, so... Uh, just go to Sam's video, or go to Michelle McDaniel's video, or, um, Cynical Dude's video. Did Alex also do one? I feel like Alex's Shook also did one, but I could be wrong about that. The whole, like, never contact me again, we're done now, it's giving me... Like, immature teenager breaking up with their friend over a boy vibes? <laughs> it's very cringy. It kind of gives me, like, secondhand embarrassment. But even in this post, as he's done all along and the podcasts and all the reporting that he's chosen to do, we can see that he's still trying to spin the narrative. Within this post, he's making it look like he couldn't post about weight stigma or fat liberation, when actually, the committee didn't care about- So I guess here it is kind of important to look at what the Fat Doctor UK is highlighting, and I'm going to pause on the screen. Only because Dr. Laramie believes that this somehow supports an argument that they're making that they are being targeted for speaking out. And all this is saying is Miss Gilson said that through the course of your social media posts, you have drawn criticism and have been openly criticized by other doctors working in the field of nutrition. Is, is there a lie there? Is there something untrue about that statement? Um, and then the next highlighted bit is, that's because I no longer recognize the authority of an organization that both enables and supports weight stigma by, result by refusing to take action and trying to silence anyone who dares to speak out against it. Okay, so I guess... I guess the argument that is being made is that you're being targeted... You're being targeted. I mean, you are being targeted for posting misinformation and other people who are not spreading misinformation are probably questioning it. Um, look, man, I've seen professional, professional on professional violence on Twitter before. I've been in the middle of it myself. It's, it's interesting to watch, but like this, this level of meltdown is usually reserved. About that at all. Their exact wording was that they have assessed posts across various platforms and they appreciate that Dr. Larmy has expressed his opinions on contentious matters publicly. They recognize why this has caused concern. However, they have not identified information to suggest that they have done so recklessly or with the intent to harm an individual patient. Dr. Larmy supports some posts with scientific research or data. The GMC would not become involved in scientific debate. They are unable to assess the veracity of data or research used. I've assessed the post across various platforms and some TV excerpts. I appreciate that Dr. Laramie has expressed their opinions about continuous matters publicly, contentious matters publicly. That's why this caused concern to help. However, I have not identified specific information to suggest they have done so recklessly or with the intent to harm harm to individual patients or that direct medical advice is given to individual patients causing detriment. Dr. Laramie supports some posts with scientific research or data. Okay. So this whole thing actually had nothing to do with the fat doctor's insane takes on medicine and obesity. They were much more interested in the fact that the fat doctor was smearing other medical professionals on the internet and also just being generally offensive. <laughs> and, and attacking private individuals. That, that was also in there. It's not just that the fat doctor was going after their colleagues. It's that the fat doctor went after vulnerable individuals, which... Don't get me wrong, them going after their, per their, their peers, what have you, this shit happens. It was the going after that guy, the way that they went after them, that is really just like, whoa, that, that's the bridge too far, really, honestly. <laughs> On a public platform. And look, I mean, a win is a win here. Him losing his medical license is about as good as it could get for us. Even if he resigned it himself, that's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, you're still no longer a practicing GP, so. But this whole thing is kind of giving me like, Theranos case vibes where they really only cared that a rich person stole from other rich people. They didn't really actually care about the patients who were involved or harmed in this whole thing. And 
I know it's a little unfair because, again, they didn't find any patients who were complaining, but there are people out there who are listening and actively following the fat doctor and their terrible advice and classes, and it's ridiculous the amount of money people are paying to be fed misinformation. I see what Sam is saying here. However, I guess the counter to that is that there's no real way to prove that any one individual is specifically following Fat Doctor UK's advice as a doctor. Like, the Fat Doctor didn't come out and be like, as your doctor, I am recommending X, Y, and Z. And that person goes, okay, and then the, goes forward and follows that information. Like, me just saying, hey, I saw this rando doctor on the internet with this one time talking about something, so I went and gone and did it. That's not really that doctor's fault. It's also kind of hard to prove. Um, now, the fat doctor did say that they were going to work in a private. I don't know if that means they're going to go hang their shingle and, and practice as a private doctor, or if they're just going to apply their knowledge base to a adjacent related job. But in that situation, I could see people directly paying fat doctor money for fat doctor's advice under the impression that they are getting medical advice from a doctor i feel like that might be something that could be brought up but it wasn't and maybe that's because like the fat doctor hadn't started doing that yet but it would be interesting to see if a they have any clients to begin with and b um if any of those clients would be willing to come forward because again if they're not going to come forward i don't know i don't know what all could be done there but so that that would be my only caveat to any of that so it doesn't really feel like justice does it now before we officially wind this down i feel as though i need to mention once again that the fat doctor is just eating this up again painting himself as both the victim and the martyr for the cause right to whom we would disclose this information indefinitely so it'll be on my it basically makes me unemployable for two years because it says that i'm a racist so I, i'm unlikely that I'm going to get employed, right? That destroys my future employment for the next two years. And when you think about it, this is a pretty hefty claim coming from someone who's been posting publicly for more than a year that they chose to quit their job and are choosing to not actively pursue being a GP in the future so that they can focus on their online content. All of that said, the thing that I really want to focus on here is that the fat doctor actually has an immense amount of privilege. To I'm more concerned about the fat doctor's statement that they were going to do private courses and that kind of thing. Like, that concerns me more than anything. Like, I don't care that the fat doctor is going to go focus on their social media and, and their blog posts and all that stuff. Whatever. Go have a good time doing that. I'm more concerned about the individual one-on-one -on -one stuff because that's going to be direct influence over individuals as opposed to just, like, whoever happens to hear the podcast kind of a situation. Um... And I think that's going to be, if the fat doctor does pursue that, I'm going to, I feel like that's the next potential landmine for them, minefield for them, if you will, because if they're trying to tout their, their doctor credentials that they no longer have as reasons for why you should work with them, doesn't that kind of imply medical advice? Despite painting himself as the victim here. Take a look had to eat into my savings the only way we've managed to survive my husband is disabled and he uh is not able to work and will never be able to work again um <clears throat> in dentistry because he's a dentist and so he uh, is not earning any income and i have been the sole earner and will continue to be the sole earner for the rest of our lives and i when i went off sick originally i went off sick with stress and burnout that was back in 21 um and that was actually partly to do with the GMC, but actually at the time it was more to do with burnout, cut and the fact that two out of my two of my three children were in and out of hospital. Like I, I don't remember how many times we went into hospital, but I think it was eighteen or twenty times in one year we were in and out of hospital. So it was a lot. I was having a really difficult time, and so that's why I went off uh, sick to begin with. But then all of this happened, and I was planning to go back to work because I didn't have any sick pay and I needed to make money. And I couldn't because of this, because of how this impacted me mentally and emotionally, which I will talk about in a minute. But it has impacted my bottom line. Now, I'm not saying this so you feel sorry for me. Um, I am perfectly aware of the fact of how lucky I am that I had enough savings that I could survive and that I could feed my family and protect my family for the last couple of years. Plenty of people, if they lost their job, that would be the end of them, right? Like they would be homeless. I'm not homeless. I'm perfectly aware of the fact of how privileged I am. and I'm not complaining about it, but um, 
to 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 get to you know to to get to this place that we're in right now, we had to sell our house, you know, spend you know eat into our savings, take out loans, <clears throat> et cetera, et cetera. Now I don't know about all of you out there. I mean, I just want to go on record saying I feel bad for them because no one wishes that kind of that's a lot to deal with. So I do feel bad for them, but at least they acknowledge that they had a safety net to fall into. So there, but there is absolutely no way that I could take two years off of work, especially if my spouse was also not bringing in any income at all. Also implied that it was paid. Like you took two, you, you basically took a sabbatical and got paid. But if you're listening really, really closely, he's not only telling us that they were wealthy enough to have savings for this, that he could take off multiple years without any income coming in. That is immense privilege in itself. But then he also mentioned in there that they had the capability to take out loans. And I don't know how it works in the UK. Maybe someone can enlighten me. I know I have followers from the UK. How on earth is it possible for someone to take out loans if they do not have a source of income to be able to prove that they can pay the loan back? Like that is something we would have to do here in the US. So I'm curious if that differs um, like in the UK or in other countries. Please let me know because I'm always curious to learn these things. But when I heard that, I have no idea. The only loans I have are my student loans, and they were more than happy to hand those over to me without any evidence that I could pay them back. <laughs> student loans, don't do them unless you have to. And even then, if you feel like you have to do student loans, really evaluate if you need to go to college. Just putting it out there. The debt is not necessarily worth it. That made me think that they have to have family, whether it's his family, which I know, like, his mom has passed and he has a terrible relationship with his dad, but someone has to be helping them. If it's not a bank giving them the loan, it has to be a family member or a friend, right? There's really no other option. But in the background of this whole thing, I also want you to think about how irresponsible it is that neither of them can work or bring in an income, he nor his husband, and they have three children on top of all of it. These are details of the situation, even though they're not at the forefront, these are details that are very important, like they should not be ignored, because there is an immense amount of privilege behind this. It's just wild to think about because he's now presenting this like he's going to be in some serious financial trouble, going as far as to share that he made very little last year with his followers. It's impacted me financially, folks. Um, in 2022 to 2023, I just filed my tax return, 31st of January, I filed my tax return for 2022 to 2023 from April to April, right? Um, and I made, in total, £5,713 that year. That's how much money I made. But he's the one who decided to quit his real-life job to continue to be a jerk to people on social media. And I think the thing that is just, like, tripping me up here is I, I don't understand, like... <laughs> for what? Like, what is he gaining? <laughs> Sam EXE has, has malfunctioned. <laughs> 404. Not found. I know that feeling. I I think the argument is given that the fat doctor is the sole and sole source of income and also has three children apparently in the home still, that it was irresponsible for them to stop working just so that they could continue to be an asshole online. So I I don't know what do you what do you do in that situation? How supportive is your family of this is what my, my real question. Like, how supportive is your husband of the fact that you were just like, eh, screw him, I'm, I'm quitting. Like, I don't know. How much, how much say does the ch do the children have in this situation, you know? How old, I don't know how old they are, and I really don't need to know. It's, it's really kind of irrelevant to the argument. But, like, how did that discussion go down? It sounds like... It kind of sounds like if the doctor, if doctor, fat doctor had just like wrote it out, they probably would have just gotten a write up on their account on the, on their little folder, whatever, and maybe just, just like a little tiny black mark, but probably still would have been able to work. But since they were the ones that said, I'm giving up my license, period. That, that was what actually caused them to lose the ability to practice medicine in the UK. It sounded like they were just kind of going towards a, a pretty hard slap, but you'd still have had your license. But it sounds like they're the ones that were like, no, screw it, burn it all to the ground. 
lesson from this because it seems like social media makes him miserable and he can't control who he is on social media and it keeps getting him into this trouble and spiraling and eating up all his time. So what does he gain from this? Because it doesn't seem like it makes him very happy. And to kind of cement all of this that I've just talked about, I found this very recent-ish post on their Instagram. I'm asking for people to have my back. I have had your back for a long time. And now there are people coming on here complaining to me about what it's like, why I'm, I'm, why I'm using AI, why I'm using AI. But if I'm using AI in order to support my business, in other words, if I'm using Canva, which by the way, every person does on the internet, if I'm using Canva to create my Instagram posts and there's a little AI button on there that helps you with it and I'm using it to save myself time because right now I am trying to earn money to keep my king electricity on and that's a problem for you, then get out of my life. I, I use Canva, so I've had a couple of people not like the AI, but it is what it is. Seriously, get out of my life. The fact that no one can be bothered to support me during my time of need is one thing, but to criticize me because I'm not up to your standard and to accuse me of being disappointing you and get out of my life. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of all of it. I'm tired of living in a world where people take, 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 take. And I'm not asking for anything. I'm not asking for your money. I'm not asking for literally, I'm not even asking for a word of support, but I will not tolerate your attacks. However, they come. I'm done. I am tired and I'm done. I get being tired of, especially if you're chronically online and that is your social life, which is what it sounds like is happening here. I get getting frustrated and overwhelmed and being mad especially at your audience especially when you have a parasocial relationship with them fat doctor but this kind of tirade this, this kind of tantrum never works well it never makes you look good it never makes you look like a victim it never brings people to your side it always makes you look like an ass i would just recommend not doing them as i've said many times especially with anna's little wine fests that she'll do go ahead and record the video all you want just don't post it it's fine maybe there is something therapeutic about seeing yourself on camera or on your phone just ranting and raving your little heart out because god knows i make videos like that all the time not about my videos channel god knows i make videos like that all the time but i don't post them i don't even keep them after i make them all right it, there's there's something about it makes you feel good makes you feel like you got it off your chest and then you delete the video Right? It's like writing, you know, they used to tell you to write a, a letter to whoever it is that's ticked you off that day, and then you're supposed to burn the letter or trash the letter. You throw it away. You release it into the ether. Putting it out there like this puts out the ugliest version of you to all of your followers. Is that really what you want people to see? Is that really how you want to be perceived? And everybody who's watching this know that I don't have it in me to keep going forever. I don't. It's not possible for me to keep going forever. I have eaten into all of my savings. I don't have any left. We've run out. I sold my car just so I could feed my children last year. That money's run out. I have to make money somehow, which is why I'm trying to, to turn my advocacy work into some kind of money-making adventure because I put all the, the energy and the passion and the and my soul into it and I would just like to be paid just a little bit just enough to pay my thing bills and you will have a problem with me using AI you can fuck right off all of you once again like wow just wow like I it baffles me that the fat doctor like takes it to this point and talks to people this way I don't think he but is it really that weird given TikTok and TikTok. I mean, I see this kind. Of, well, I saw this kind of behavior on Twitter. I saw this kind of behavior on YouTube. This is not uncommon for the chronically online, though, because they don't have, they don't have a barrier. You know, they don't have a filter because everything is online. They share everything online. They perceive their online audience as being a real physical entity and a and possibly a friend, if not sometimes an enemy. You know, it's for them, there is, it is perfectly acceptable to do this because they don't see the downside of it until the downside starts affecting them. And then they get even more mad because how dare you attack them in their time of need? And it's just like, don't put it on the internet. Like, this isn't that difficult of a concept. He likes helping people. And most of the time, I don't think he likes people at all. <laughs> and that's just my opinion. But based on the way he is often talking to people, I just, I don't, there's such a disdain there. But he loved being smug and he loved being offensive. 
And so he didn't let any of those things go. And the result of that is what we've just witnessed. Mm -hmm. He tanked his own career for social media. Talk about putting all of your eggs in one finicky income bucket. I could never. All right. That is all I have for you all today. My God, I tried to make that interesting. So I hope that you are all still here with me. I think it was very interesting. And if you want to see Sam do the wrap up, go ahead and go watch their video all the way to the end. I think Fat Doctor UK can be a warning to a lot of people for a lot of reasons, one of which being, um, is it really more important to you to be able to be a dick online than it is for you to have steady income? Because I would think having steady income might be more desirable than being a butt monkey on the internet. I'm just putting that out there, but I grew up in a generation before that was even an option. So, you know, I'm not chronically online. I don't exist solely for social media. So for me, that perspective is different. Maybe for some people who have never not known the not known social media, right? I mean, people were giving their kids Facebook accounts sometimes from the point they were born. Right. So we've got at least two generations that have grown up not knowing what it was like without social media. OK, so for them, maybe cutting out social media really is a, a huge blow, you know, but it's not it's not healthy to be always online, you guys. You got to you got to have outside interests. It's not even touch grass. It's just do anything else. Go go skydive. Do anything just for a little while. All right, if you've made it this far in this incredibly long video, go ahead and leave a UK flag down in the comments section. Or you know what? Leave a flag from wherever you're from. Le leave your national flag down in the comments section. I promise you I won't know what half of them are, but that's fine. Um, I can be taught. So there's your emoji for this conversation. So there's your emoji for this video. And I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. I think we'll go watch Keanu Dockery's video not immediately after this one, but in, in the future, um, just because it'd be nice to have some context and it'd be nice to see the video that apparently the video heard round the pond. So that would be actually pretty funny. Um, I remember watching it when you kind of put it out, but I couldn't, I, I don't remember it, honestly. So yeah. All right. So your emoji is your national flag and let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I know this is a really long video. I apologize, but I don't feel like cutting it down. And I will talk to everybody in the next one. Bye. This is my outro music. You can't copyright strike me because it's just me singing. This is my outro music. Thank you for watching. See you next time.